Um, our next uh, presenter is uh, from SBB Cargo. We've uh, seen it uh, mentioned already before in uh, Christian's introduction. Uh, SBB Cargo, the first Swiss locomotives we equipped there, and we started with a diesel locomotive called the AM843 type, which is a Voslo diesel locomotive. And Benjamin Wecker will now uh, introduce us a little bit more about this project and what we did with it. With it. And um, yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, we're happy to have you here on stage today, Benjamin. Yeah, yeah thank you very much, Babette. Uh, thank you, Maxime, uh, for the interesting presentation so far. Um, okay, let's start. Yeah, um, my name is Benjamin Wecker. I'm from SBB Cargo, and I'm working uh, as a senior project manager. Different uh, um, types have uh, the main part of my work is digitalization in our fleet. Um, so here we start again. And, um, you know, um, normally in, in, in railways we have tons of data. The, the only problem is to acquire that data, to make it accessible, and to combine it in a meaningful way. And that's, uh, I want to present here how we do uh, digitalization at SBB Cargo, and I will present you two um, business, two use cases. The first is uh, stretching a heavy maintenance interval of uh, an uh, shunting loco AM843, and the second one is to uh, a study to examine the right size of a battery to replace a diesel shunting loco. Yeah, before we start, some introducing words about SBB Cargo. Maybe the most of you know us, uh, maybe you don't. It's not so important. We have the biggest rave rate company in Switzerland. We have around about 2,200 employees. Mainly we do single wagon load, which is um, very special. You know, that's a little bit of a dinosaur in, in the railway business. Uh, but we do also direct trains, and we have a, a special network for combined transports. Um, our fleet consists of 300, uh, 350 different locomotives. They are, we have a great heterogeneity in this, uh, in this fleet. We have locomotives that differ in age, in type, in technology used, and also manufacturer. Also, we have, uh, for example, SLM. It's a non-existing uh, local manufacturer at this point of the time. So you see it's a great heterogeneity we have to deal with. And last but not least, we have uh, 5,700 wagons in service. So, um, yeah, how we did uh, digitalization at uh, SBB Cargo. Main topic or main uh, challenge was to cover the, greater, uh, the great heterogeneity we have. Uh, therefore, we um, have an approach, step-by-step -step approach. For example, we use um, very simple, very basic GPS trackers for our oldest locomotives only to have a track and trace. For the newer ones, we applied, uh, we upgraded them with racers from, from Renova to have um, a deeper insight in the locomotives. And main challenge was to, and it was as the main cause, we chose Renova for this, uh, uh, for this part, to integrate all the data in one platform. So that's very important for us, for our people. They are working with the system only to have one system. They don't have to use different platforms. So I come to our first example. It's the, the AM843. It's a, a great diesel, a big diesel shunting loco, 1.5 megawatt. Um, we have uh, 45 of that type in our portfolio. And um, to access the data of the locomotive, we have to do several things. So the loco comes without any IoT device, so we have to do an upgrade with a raised telematic device. This raised is connected in two ways. We have one time the loco control um, computer, the so-called Schneider Rechner, and the second one is the cut engine, the diesel engine itself. And the third is uh, we integrated, that is what uh, uh, Christian mentioned before, um, a so-called oil level sensor. This one is also connected to the raster. And here we see um, an interesting graph of this oil level sensor. Uh, you see here a, a data cloud of, uh, of, of uh, data points over time of a um, specific locomotive of this oil level. Um, and 
two things here are very interesting and important. First of all, you see a noise change is happening there yeah, from the red to the, to the green line. And the second one is the steepness of the regression line. And the steeper the regression line is, the more oil uh, the engine is consuming. And as you know, in diesel, um, an engine, it's not, not so good if an engine consumes oil. And it's normally you can consume a normal uh, way, but um, if that line is going steeper, then you know there's some problem there. Yeah, in the end, <coughs> what did we with that, the data? On the right side, you see uh, the object of interest. It's the diesel engine cut type uh, 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 3512B. Um, we, we use different data sources. We, we fusion them to, to create a very tight network to, to, to control the condition in a condition-based manner um, how, this, uh, how is the health status of the uh, diesel engines. Mainly we use the telematic data from, from Renova, from the Racer, but also and that was a very interesting and important part we found um, oil and cooling liquid laboratory analysis. So they were there, but we only have to digitalize them to use them. And we also integrated that data in the Renova dashboard. And last but not least, uh, to ensure a greater lifespan of the diesel engine, we do um, visual inspections. Um, also, these visual inspections, they ensure, or we, 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 we collect data about the outer appearance of the engine as well. And we also integrated this data inside the Renova dashboard. And overall, with that data and this, that ang, uh, this tight conditioning, uh, conditioning monitor network, we are able to expand um, the maintenance interval from 36,000 hours to 42 operating hours. So now I come to the second um, um, example. You know, uh, climate and climate change is um, a very important uh, topic today, also for the SPB group. And SPB group as a whole, not only SPB Cargo, uh, wanted or wants to reach climate neutrality by 2030. That's an important goal. You see on the left side the actual status. We have right now, uh, right now uh, around about 90,000 um, tons of uh, CO2 emissions equivalent a year. On the right side, you see the goal. It's climate neutrality. The, um, the hallmark is uh, 2030. Till 2030, we want to reduce our emissions. And uh, up uh, 2030 to the future, we want to compensate the rest. And if you look at this part here, the light red one, that's mainly diesel traction. And you know, SBB has a high, or SBB in Switzerland as a whole, has a high electrification grade of 99%. So still some diesel there. So if we want to reach that um, goal of climate neutrality, we have to deal with the diesel locus as well. So you know we have um, 76 SPB as a whole, not only the 45 of SPB cargo, and we, they produce uh, round about, it's a little bit of failure, 16,000 tons of CO2, and we have to replace them. As I said before, in Switzerland we have a high electrifi electrification degree of our railway network, round about 99%. So the natural solution is to replace the locos by an electric loco with a battery. But the main and the big question remain how big this battery has to be to ensure, on the one hand, not to overpay battery capacity because it's very, it's not cheap, you have to pay it. Every kilowatt hour you have to pay. And the second one is to ensure the same operational scenarios and usability for shunting as we have today, also in the future. And here you see an interesting graph how we did that. You know, um, the data which is coming from Renova is very useful, but it's not complete. Yeah? We cannot differentiate between uh, traction under wire and traction without wire. So that was the main task to match the data here. We have SBB internal maps and, and data, and we can match the data. And to differentiate, is that traction effort, is that under or without wire. Because if you are under wire, you can use the electricity directly and you can recharge your battery. And without, you need the battery to uh, have an energy supply. Interesting here is traction effort. As Maxime 
mentioned before, we have uh, reverse engineering here to do. Um, that was not available on the data stream itself. We had to do some recalculation. It was a great effort to do, but in the end, we had it. Also, with uh, additional information about auxiliary systems, okay, you have air conditioning, you have uh, pressure, um, a train control system, all consuming energy on the local, and you have to know that to calculate the battery size correctly. So in the end, we were able to, or our data scientists of SBB um, group were able to calculate that. You see on the left the picture with the um, black and red dots, the black one, uh, it's a picture of basal area, maybe you know in Switzerland, and uh, the black ones are standing for uh, traction, GPS positions, tractions under, under wire, and the red ones are without. So that was the main effort to do that in a standardized matter. And in the end, we were able to calculate, and uh, the capacity we calculated is about 500 to 600 kilowatt hours per uh, loco, which we have to provide that uh, shunting operation can um, succeed also with a new electric battery loco in, in the future without any restrictions. So this lies an optimal database for the replacement project will be in effect uh, or to, to reach climate neutrality by 2030. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, I think I must say I was uh, the key account manager of SBB Cargo from the beginning, so I had the pleasure to run uh, these projects together with Benjamin. And I think this is a very good example of the variety of things you can do once you have a train connected. And uh, if you remember uh, what he said about the engine in the first place, which is actually, um, you might not know the AM843, but the engine is the same, for example, in a G1206 locomotive, which... Uh, uh, several of you are operating. Um, so when you see that you could extend the uh, the overhaul from 36,000 to 42,000 hours, that's huge. That's really money, and this is where it comes. Uh, it goes from a just technical digitization project to something business relevant, and this is where uh, where it starts uh, being being funny and uh, making also uh, people around outside of the technical team team happy. Thank you.